Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about the organizational information requirements. The OIR, they're so important because it really sets the stage for what's strategically important for the owner. If you have a casino operator versus a hospital owner, they're going to have different requirements from a strategy and running their business perspective. So Akos, what do you think? Why do we need an OIR in place as the first priority? Okay, picture this. You are managing a big project and your organization has goals like saving costs, being sustainable and reducing risks, which sounds straightforward, but how do you make sure that every decision aligns with these goals? And how do you make sure that every decision points to the right direction? So this is when and why you need an OIR. Think of the OIR as the company's North Star. It helps uh, to share the why behind everything that the company stands for. The OIR can also be thought as your map and it keeps your project motivation aligned with the long-term goals of the organization. Marty, what do you think uh, are the challenges teams face with a poor or with a missing organizational information requirement? Well, imagine you are driving a car, but you don't have a map or GPS. Similarly, without a OIR, team get lost and decisions are made in random direction and nobody knows exactly wh where they are headed to. So more or like without an OIR, you are looking at the teams end up chasing the wrong goals or taking the wrong turns along the way. And nobody knows what the information they needed to make the important decisions. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to defining organizational information requirements, several challenges, however, can get in the way. You know, without clarity on what to include, the process can be confusing and inefficient. So we'll break down here the key challenges that we need to over. Most of the time it's because the organizations that are asking for these requirements, it's not their day job. So they're not doing this every day. And there's often a lack of, lack of clarity on what information they should include. So you have to define the functional components of an organization first, and then ask the questions to try and understand and uncover what's important to them from a strategic perspective. Another big challenge is ensuring ISO 19650 compliance. It's not always easy to make sure that the OAR meets the specific requirements of the standards and most of the time failing to do so can create problems down the line. You also have the difficulty of aligning diverse stakeholder needs. Everyone involved from clients, contractors and consultants, their needs something different from the OIR and balancing those needs is often tricky. Keeping the OIR updated throughout the project lifecycle is a challenge of its own. As the project evolves, the OIR needs to be revisited and adjusted and this can be hard to manage without the streamlined process. But don't get disheartened because the good news is that an effective OIR will keep you on track. Here's how to use an OIR and stay on course. The first step is really to identify the high level activities. So first you have to identify what those activities might need, what information is important. And OIRs are different for each type of owner or appointing party. Because if you think about the difference between a zookeeper, let's say, and a casino operator, like I said before, as a, an example, both of them focus on maybe operational efficiency and safety and compliance, but they have different priorities based on the nature of their business. For a zookeeper, they might emphasize on animal welfare and the habitat, the maintenance of their habitat and maybe conservation efforts, ensuring that the environment is healthy and that education is there for both the visitors and anybody else, the, the stakeholders involved. On the other hand, a casino operator is more concerned with maybe security and surveillance and managing their cash flow and complying with gambling regulations maybe. And while focusing on their customer data, maybe for loyalty programs and marketing, maybe there's some similarities in that loyalty program for a zookeeper and for a casino operator, but maybe their strategic operational goals would be different. So while both needing a strong facilities management and a data and operational data, the zookeeper's OIR might be driven for the animal care and sustainability, whereas a casino operator is more centered on the facility integration and customer engagement and cybersecurity. An asset manager might also need different requirements. So monitoring warranty details and expiry dates of warranties for each asset, they might need that so they can plan ahead and make sure that the assets go beyond their warranty period. They're actually maintaining them and keeping them up to date. And you know, another example might, might be a school teacher that needs to understand how many children can be taught in a classroom so that they can plan for their intake. And the whole point about defining these organizational requirements is that when we identify them, we can see that the primary operational needs are different 
And if we identify what they are early on, we can make sure that every single team on that project is actually aligned and delivering value for that owner. And it can help to them, help them support their organizational and strategic goals and make sure everything's aligned with that broader business need. Next, it's important to define the purpose of the information, ensuring that the right information flows back to the flows back to support business operations. Think of the purposes like meeting objectives, supporting stakeholders, compiling with uh, local regulations and building control requirements and ensuring key decisions are informed. So the goal here is clarity. Each piece of information should serve a clear function, adding value to the organization. Consider it as the foundation so you are not just collecting data but ensuring it's aligned with organizational goals, tailored to inform both immediate and long-term strategies. By clearly defining these purposes, the OAR becomes a dynamic tool guiding project teams and stakeholders towards a shared vision. And then you will also have to rationalize information across departments. You need to streamline data from finance, IT, facilities management and more into a unified and comprehensive OIR. Imagine integrating asset management operations and production data. This gives you a holistic view and guarantees consistency across the entire organization. By rationalizing information, you enhance operational efficiency and ensure the OIR supports broader business functions as well. Finally, make sure your OIR can be used to drive your asset information requirement and project information requirement. This will ensure seamless information flow from OIR to the actual management of the assets and the project. The information should be exchanged at the right time, meeting both the AIR and PIR needs to support project execution and asset management. OIR forms the foundation of your information management framework ensuring that project and asset requirements are met while supporting your organization's strategic business goals. Exactly. And we make it super simple because there is an organizational information requirements template. And with a single click, we can create a lot of the content that can then be completed as you go through each project with the owner, or if you're the owner using it, you can simply answer the questions. This is all about following ISO 19650 and answering questions to make sure that you're compliant, but you're really delivering the right answers so that teams can understand what those requirements are. Let's take a closer look at a completed OIR. In this example, we see our wildlife Haven Zoo project, and it shows how all of the decisions have been documented, keeping everything aligned with the organization's core goals. And for a zoo, this means prioritizing animal welfare, the habitat maintenance and conservation efforts. As you can see in this OIR, they're all clearly laid out exactly what's required for each stage from design through to the daily operations. And it keeps everyone on the same page, whether they're focused on the exhibit design, the facilities for visitors, or whether it's the technical systems that support all of the animal care. With each requirement being clearly defined, teams know precisely what they need to do to meet the organization, in this case, the zoo's operational goals. In the end, these OIR become such an important document because it's the North Star aligning every task from each team with that long-term set of goals for the organization. So we'll share this example with you. You can use it with teams to understand exactly what type of questions you should ask, how you should answer them. And with an example, you can really clearly understand how that can be following and compliant to ISO 19650 so you can set up your project for long-term success. So we say, remember, don't plan late. Plan early. With Planally. We'll see you on the next one.